Hello, and welcome to the Follow the Leader Patreon feed, where we play other types of games. My name is Zachary Fredrickson. You can find me on Twitter, at OffSkatingGod, and I am joined today by Jade. I am the entity known in the common tongue as Jade. You can find me on Twitter, at JadeOxedros, and I use they-them pronouns. Uh, by August. Hi, I'm August. You can find me on Twitter at HarpyDora. My pronouns are they, them. And for the record, I did not wave at the microphone this time. And by Sam. Uh, hi, I'm Sam. You can find me on Twitter at SAKalo, and you can find my art at samkalo.art, which is a website. Um, I use he, him pronouns. Baller. Uh, today, we will be delving back into Fantasy Crafts, written by Alex Flagg, Scott Guerin, and Patrick Capera uh, back in 2009. We have used, well, Standing Stones in general has played uh, Fantasy Craft once for our last year's, one of the last year's live streams. Check the VOD for that wherever it is. Uh, tonight's a night. We steal God from his heaven where uh, a group of not-so-noble adventurers uh, climbed the highest peaks of the coastal city of Bazkarat and stole the god egg from the divine cradle. Uh, this is much less uh, high-profile than that. <laughs> we're just vibing. We're, we're vibing out in the countryside. Bazkarat is a rumor it is a it is a dream that some people have it is 500 miles south of our current position we are somewhere else um i guess i could just go into it we don't have a like a straight up oh should, i should say um lines and veils and stuff probably yes yes listen it's been a while since i recorded Anything. We're also <laughs> not using our like standard intro right now because it's because Patreon, Patreon episode because Patreon is different. Yeah, uh, which is why you forgot. Which is why that's I'm for- saying. Oh, that's the that's the recording folder. Yes, can someone tell me what the lines and veils are? Our lines, which are things we absolutely do not want to see, are homophobia, transphobia, racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, violence against children and animals. Well. Okay, that doesn't quite count since I'm a rabbit today, but uh, you know, <laughs> non sentient so animals. Ra- um, sexual assault, domestic violence or intimate partner violence, unwanted pregnancy, and plagues and pandemics. Our veils, which are things we're fine with addressing but we'll just fade to black on, are steamy situations, graphic descriptions of bodily harm, and terminal illness. Yes. Um, I, will, I will do my best to pull back on descriptions of bodily harm. This is, we Fantasy Craft is a game in the Dungeons & Dragons style. There will be lots of combat. There will be people smashing stuff and slicing stuff and stabbing stuff. But I will try to be, I will be less graphic about <laughs> my depictions of that. This we is kind can of an, just turn it into a joke. Like, uh, I would describe what happened to this person, but one of our veils. <laughs> Yes, I mean, I will, I'll try not to fall back on that particular one too often, but, uh, but yeah, perhaps. Um, yes. Uh, I think it's fine. Yeah. So we are playing um, a, slightly, like a, a semi-modified, not very modified, but mostly just reflavored in, in my own setting version of the fantasy graphic adventure Darkest Hour. Doesn't mean anything to you yet, but perhaps it will at some point.
So, our story begins. The camera watches as the sun sets over the, the mountains on the western edge of the southern Adelac Valley. It rolls over the sweeping hills of the valley to its eastern front, a set of peaks and waves called the Azure Rim that divides the southern Adelac Valley from its eastern neighbor in the Carlin Footlands. It's beautiful. The dusky air makes the Azure Rim look almost blue in its foliage as we head down through the trees and the, and the peaks to a small valley passage through the rim called Sullen Pass. Specifically, a roadside inn at the mouth of Sullen Pass where horses shuffle nervously in the stable and the sound of earthen cookware can be heard clinking and clanking within the kitchen and common room of the Tipsy Wyvern, where our adventurers sit at a table. The, the table moves past. Uh, it, 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 it kind of ducks around uh, a pretty barmaid who is carrying two trays of, of mugs. It, it, it ducks under somebody swinging their arm to point at somebody who's playing a game of cards. And finally a light at one table in particular where we will find our heroes of the evening. Who would like to introduce their character first? Um, I can go. All right. What do we see as we as we alight upon your character, August? You see a rabbit person who is kind of a dun color with white highlights. He is about uh, three foot, eight inches tall, has a shock of pink hair between his bunny ears, and he's wearing a kind of fine leather armor that looks a little fancy. Not too fancy, but, you know, a little nice. And mm. uh, kind of a shit-eating grin, and he's got a rapier <laughs> at his hip. Fantastic! And what is what is Precious doing? Um, uh, you you have just finished your dinner for the night as you stopped off uh, on your way through the Sullen Pass. Um, sometime tomorrow, you expect to be heading through and past the village of Andra on your way out into the Carlin foothills. So um, I actually, one of the pieces of gear I purchased was a game. So I Ooh. think he's got like maybe a checker set out and he's uh, trying to use this to swindle somebody out of a couple of silver because he's a little light on coin after uh, buying his provisions. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Are you swindling one of your adventuring companions or someone else? <laughs> it's going to be someone else because you don't... I'm hoping that these people will have my back. So <laughs> it's a case of, you know, you, you don't crap where you eat. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a place um, that is mostly um, the clientele and mostly people who are, you know, walk, coming through travelers and merchants and stuff. So you can probably um, give me a, just for fun, give me a, 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 a notice check to see if you can find a good mark. All right, let me see if I'm clicking the right button. It's nice. Yeah, it's the one on the left. Hey, yeah, you are a very, um, a very good natured uh, and seemingly endless pocketed uh, fellow who is who is moving in uh, the same direction as you. Is has 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 set you up with this game. What game is it? I think it's something relatively simple. Like my mind goes to Chinese checkers, but August doesn't know how to play Chinese checkers. Mm. So, um, <laughs> but you know, some some token based game, maybe like Moncala. Actually, Moncala oh. would be great for for uh like uh a, a using travel, slate of a hand to, set, yeah. Oh, do you yeah. you wanna you wanna oh. you wanna <laughs> do some prestidigitation to show off how how well you can beat this guy. I I sure do. All right. So you roll a twenty-two on your on your notice check. 
Uh, give us a prestidigitation check. Oh, Fuck shoot. Fuck yes. Nat 20, <laughs> so that's a 28. That's a nice. 28, yes. It's not a, in this game, it's not a crit uh, yet. You could spend a an action die to make it a crit, but you don't need to. Nah. This guy's yeah. like, oh, wow! That was there, and now it's there! You must be very good at this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you are having a great time. Uh, this guy seems perfectly happy to be parted with a few silver um if in exchange for for an enjoyable game um as we continue uh to to move around the thing um who would like to go next i'll go all right <laughs> sam's waiting so <laughs> uh so sat across from precious playing his game making a point to not pay attention. It's just like, I don't need to bear witness to whatever that is. I'm fine. Um, and it's sort of like absent-mindedly, absent-mindedly uh, chewing on a peppermint leaf and just sort of like is sat kind of basking. Uh, because the thing about my character, uh, whose name is Liskal, is that they're a chameleon person, specifically a uh, Kamai, uh, as per fantasy craft, which is dope as hell uh so being full of food they're a little bit sluggish right now it's not like yes good my one meal of the day (sighs) but they have uh their scales uh they're about five foot four uh they don't look much like an earth chameleon they don't have quite the the big eyes but they do have sort of a wide crest Mm -hmm. like around the head that sort of looks almost like a bouffon hairdo or like a very exceptionally large pair of ears uh, their scales at the moment are a very sort of shade of green. Some are sort of, some are, some are almost like a leafy green. Some are like that sort of antique brass kind of patina. Mm-hmm. And they've got a, a heavy cloak sort of thrown back over their chair, a long bow at their side, and sort of a, a big bag. And they've sort of got a book in front of them that they're idly flicking through and making notes in. Um, and yeah, this that that is them. They'll happily engage in conversation with our other group member, but they are definitely more sleepy and less perhaps aware than they usually are. Because they tend to pay a lot of attention to what's going on around them because mm. they are not from these parts. It's coo- it, is, it is cooler in these northern climes than you're used to. You're probably from like Bazkarat or from one of the various uh, island nations of the Citrine and and other and, and mm-hmm. beyond. Um but yeah, this is this is a, it's a lot cooler up here than you're used to. But you're you know powering through it. You got some some heated stuff to to help you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I also have a handy spell in my repertoire. I know very few spells, but the one I know was meant that I could leave home mm-hmm. and uh, deal with being further north. So uh, cool. Uh, and then we turn to our third adventurer for the day. Hello. I am the third adventurer. <laughs> My character's name is Mur Smith, and he is an orc smith. <laughs> or he was before his village got attacked by some fuckers who were like, we're going to defeat the orcs, orc scourge, you know, and then they fucking raided a town that was literally just fucking minding their own goddamn business. Um, and then he, he, he learned how to fight. Because he had to. Um, so my poor boy is now on an adventure because his village doesn't exist anymore. Very sad. He's seven foot four and he's got <clears throat> long hair and he is my beefy boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. Yeah. So, I mean, there's plenty of room to stretch yeah. out in the tipsy weaver in this tap room. You know, the ceiling is high enough that you don't have to worry about crouching. What do we see Mer doing? Probably just kind of enjoying the atmosphere. Mm. Maybe looking a little disapproving at precious uh, swindling somebody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, you 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 enjoy the atmosphere. You look around. You see that one of the barmaids is like kind of checking you out because you do have the comely trait. Uh, you are a handsome <laughs> orc, uh, and she seems pretty. I am a very handsome, handsome, handsome grandson. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, as, as this barmaid uh, with like silky black hair and like amber eyes, uh, you know. Picks up your tray. He says, uh, did you find everything all right? Uh, yes. Th- thank you, ma'am. <laughs> he sort of 
gives a little nod and continues to eat his meal. Oh. I don't think he notices. He's a little bit of a dumbass. <laughs> no. um, she kind of like looks kind of her her brow twitches for like just the barest second, <laughs> um, and then she turns to uh, Liskell and she says, "Well, you know what's interesting? Uh, you know, we don't usually get many adventures out these parts, and we got two groups in two days, which is pretty wild." Two groups. What was the other? How long ago did they come through? Oh, they they were here last night. Um, uh, a fit, you know, more of them, you know, larger group group than you. Uh, he was a, a scholar, a, a nun, uh, a, 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 an elf, uh, uh, a fellow with a, with a with a horse and a crossbow, and a, a dwarf, and a, another lizard folk like you. Oh, well, yeah. seems like um, perhaps a, a bit more of a well outfitted. Adventuring group, the we folks. Oh here. yeah, yeah. The uh, the scholar definitely had the fraternity badge on his on his uh, on his robes. So he was wow. he was uh, sanctioned. Mighty impressive. <laughs> yeah. Mm, overrated. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have a question. Mm-hmm. How long have we been an adventuring squad? Do we like know each other? <laughs> well, you're here <laughs> in at night in a tavern, so that's up to you. I, how well, I pres- how long ago did we become an adventuring crew, my friends? Uh. Hmm. Um, it had to have been long enough that you know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, that I know that you're swindling somebody. <laughs> Let's say we've been traveling together for the past, like, two or three weeks, long enough to know each other's names and know what we do, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. not necessarily long enough to know each other's backstories. Sure, sure. Sounds good. You might have met in the ramble. Uh, which is a mm. a nearby settlement uh, where where the the dwarves and laganels of the area kind of meet to 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 talk shop and and make decisions for their sort of um, nominal trade uh, agreements. Yeah, and it makes sense that Mur would be there because he's like, oh fuck, a chance to learn from all these dwarven smiths. Hell yeah. <laughs> Yes, I mean, it must not have gone super well because otherwise he would be at an apprenticeship for the next thirty years. Um, <laughs> yes, so, yes, he would. Because <laughs> uh, that's how long a dwarven apprenticeship lasts. I don't, I don't have that much time. <laughs> <laughs> and thus, you, you unfortunately had to the 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 incredible Hulk uh, traveling man music played as you walked out of the ramble, unable to dedicate mm-hmm. thirty years of your life to being a dwarven smith. I like the thought that maybe at a tavern back at the Ramble just sort of like got into a conversation about where we were traveling next. Like, Mur just like, well, that didn't work for uh, getting an apprenticeship. And then just like heading to uh, Apogee, which is obviously a bigger town. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Safety in numbers. I mean, I don't think he needs an apprenticeship for his like basic smithing work. Like, he was the only smith in town mm. in the town that he lived in. Um, but if like, you he's want to had specialize. like an. A- yeah, he's had, like, an apprenticeship to learn, like, all the basics. Like, he can fix, you know, the axle of a cart real good. Um, well, of course, that's, but that's not dwarven smith work. That's not dwarven <laughs> smith work. That shit's, like, next level. The most next level. Um, cool, yeah. So, uh, this the, the barmaid uh, introduces herself as Elizabeth and tells you if anyone needs anything. Uh, she quirks an eyebrow. You can just call her anytime. Um, <laughs> uh, and then, um, yeah, uh, heads off to, to, you know, continue to help the rest of the, uh, place. I think that offer was just for you, Mar. Hmm? He sort of raises an eyebrow. Um, and, uh, what offer? Uh, if we need anything? I'm not, I'm not following. If uh, <laughs> if my Laganel ears do not deceive me, I believe she said if you need anything. I mean, I, I suppose I have our, everything I, I really need at this moment. He's like, what? <laughs> Oh, so the merchant, the merchant who is who is getting swindled, goes like, ha ha ha! Yes, he's got the food right there. 
<laughs> yeah. See, our, our merchant friend here knows exactly what I mean. What's going on? I'm Chester. I sell fabrics. Oh. A fabrics, very, a very, you say. Textiles. A very uh, noble, a noble profession to be sure. People need them to not be naked. Yes, we do. Uh, as Chester uh, opens up his Chester. coat and has like little strips of various fabrics in it, um, <laughs> like a watch salesman. Uh, oh my god! Yeah. You, hey, hey, hey! You want to buy some swatches? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, there is an unfor- there is a commotion outside. Um, watch salesman. You hear the you hear the. Um, the baying of a of a panicked horse and the shouting of men. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm gonna stand up and go look at what's going on because I, d- I do know I do know the horse is real good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Horses understand. You me you hear the sound uh, of a horse that is like in deep, deep um, distress. Distress. Wow, that horse probably saw like a stick or something. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Horses are afraid of everything. Anyways, yeah, I'm gonna go out and see what the fuck's going on. Uh, I cool. Set my book down and follow. Mm-hmm. I'm going to uh, nod at Chester ah. and be like, "Well, my apologies. I need to make sure that uh, my friend, my charming rustic friend, uh, does not get himself into too much trouble. Uh, would you mind keeping a close eye on my Mancala set? The game will not change." Um, and I tip an imaginary hat to Chester, and I scurry off after, uh, uh my adventuring party. Cool, yep, yeah. you head out, uh, to, uh, the porch of the Tipsy Wyvern, uh, and you see that a couple of the stable hands are, like, standing at the gate, kind of transfixed, uh, as you see a lathered horse hurtling towards the inn. Um, it gets past the gates and then just crumples to the ground. Uh, pitching its rider onto the porch at your feet. Um, this rider is covered in dust, sweat, and blood, and his breathing is raspy and labored. Um, as he, I'm gonna go check on the horse. Sure. <laughs> check on the rider. Cool. Yeah. Uh, the horse is um, has passed uh, from exhaustion. Um, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's hard riding. Uh, the the rider uh, is looks like he is on death's door as well as he grabs your um, robe, Liskel, and says, Help them! They're at the church in Andra. You have to help them before they're found. Before he passes out. Um, he is not going to be alive for long. Um, and cool. as his... Uh, this is a gnarly one, I, I said... Um, this is a, uh... This is a gnarly one. It's a gnarly one. Uh, in the distance, you hear the sounds of almost, like, like thumping, thunderous footfalls, but softer than a hoof. Um, like a crowd is, is charging through a heavy fog bank that's rolling with a natural speed toward the courtyard gate. <laughs> There's a stable hand over here looking out towards the gate as this fog bank... Rolls through. Uh, I would like you all to roll initiative. Ready. Ooh. Dang. That was Waste fast. Of no time. Yeah. The fuck is, is initiative? initiative? I want to start in media res as much as possible. You know, get us into the into the. Wow. I, I had I had uh, oh yeah I did have twelve in fact. You had twelve. That is a disgusting initiative modifier, August. What did you do? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, August. <laughs> I'm very fast. I'm very, um, I'm a burglar, so I get a lot of bonuses, and I think I get a bonus for my origin as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's yeah. August's character, for the record, has a plus twelve to initiative, uh, when the other two characters have plus three and plus four. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yet they still rolled better than me. They did. Well, one of them did. Uh, Liskel. Uh, you starting you the hearing the sounds of like coming coming close. Um, not here yet. Probably will be here within the next thirty seconds. The man in, in your hands, uh, in your arms, uh, will probably be dead at that point if nothing is done. Alrighty, uh, I'll 
One quick clarification, just because the wording is unclear. When something is described as a one minute action, does that mean it takes a minute to do or is it something that lasts a minute? Because I couldn't find a duration. It is something that takes a minute to do. Thank you very much. All right, then. Uh, what I'm going to do is, because I am not the fighty fighty person in this party, I will carry, or it, I will ask somebody to help me carry. I just remembered what my strength score was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I will carry. <laughs> and I want to, like, uh, stabilize cool. this person. So, yeah, so uh, stabilizing is going to be a complex medicine task. Which basically okay. means, one, you can't, if you move him, he'll die. He has to be stabilized here. Okay. Um, y- right, you can no see problem. that he has a lot of, uh, in addition to like the exhaustion that, that he's obviously been riding for hours, he's also got um, mm-hmm. several claw and bite wounds on him. All right, I'm going to go for that first, uh, reach into um, my bag and pull out um, something I use for cleaning wounds out first, and then I will wrap the wounds. Cool. So this is so this is going to be three um, three challenges, each one taking two rounds. Uh, so okay. you're, it's going to you know be a minute before you're able to do anything else. Um, but okay. let's give us the first no the first medicine check. Nineteen. Right, first one is uh, is good. Uh, you, you're going to spend the next two two rounds. Uh, we'll say. Um, cleaning his wounds as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Something is wrong yep. with them, though. There's some sort of ichor that is that is uh, involved that is making it difficult to, to sanitize him. Okay. As part of my turn, can I try and figure out what this ichor is from? Uh, In the process of cleaning. Can I make a check? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me, let's see. Um, there's not, I don't know if it's like an arcana. In this. Is it, no. no, it's like a knowledge yeah, check. Yeah, it would be it? a knowledge check. How many studies do you have? Uh, I have... Three studies. Okay, so that's going to be a th- pl- three plus your... So you're going to have a plus seven on this check. If I've got too much, then we'll take off however no, much I should have taken no, off. That's perfect. Um, fantastic. Oh. You got a, a 27 on that. Uh, yeah, you... As you're, as you're like trying to put this... Like, get this guy from, from dying, uh, you see that he's... This icker is definitely necromantic in nature. It's not like the sort of usual, like it's it's very weird and it's very gross, uh, but it definitely has something to do with the undead. I'll call out to anyone nearby, just like this looks to be undead. Anyone who does not need to be outside should get inside. Mm. Uh, Precious, that is your turn. I think I would like to sort of look around and see if I can get, you know, if I can notice anything more about, like, what's coming. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm assuming that's a notice check. Uh, that would be a search. Search? Uh, okay. Yeah, if you're, if you're actively looking in the, into the, um, into the fog. Okay. Uh, yes. You're probably going to want to get closer, too. Yes. Uh, can I just move myself kind of, like, up next to Liskal? Yeah, I mean, let's call also would can't, you know, it's from here. It's just a fog oh. bank. They, they're coming from this, okay. from the south okay, or from the okay. east. Okay, sorry. I didn't scroll down far enough. That's my bad. Yes. The, uh, yeah, so, so to describe the area, the t- tipsy w- w- wearing is within a larger uh, walled. It's like almost like a walled um, fortification. Uh, the gate is standing wide open. You can see that there is something coming. Uh, that is in within this fog bank. There is a uh, stables to your to your left as you go out. There is the servant quarters to your right. The stables are full of horses that are starting to scream uh, in terror. Okay, I think that's as far as I can move because I've got a speed of thirty five. I'm assuming the squares are five feet. Uh, yes. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I'm gonna search. Uh, cool. Yeah. Vit. You. <laughs> Good job. Cannot. Really tell. It is a thick, thick cloud bank. You do see that that two that the two stable hands are running to attempt to close the gates, uh, but it is a heavy gate, and they are. It's going to take them a while to get that done. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mur, is your turn. So we've already established that the horse has died from being overridden. Yes, that's why it collapsed. Okay, uh, I can get about most of the way to the um, to the gates. Mm-hmm. 
Can I get out there and I guess, can I see if I notice anything? Uh, sure, yeah. I want to roll, I, I want to roll notice instead of search because I'm better at, at notice than search. Mm-hmm. Sure, you can roll notice. You're, yeah, you're not great at any of it. <laughs> um, that's fair. Sad mode of himbo. That's a 22. Oh, I'm Brad. Yeah, there, you got a 22. Uh, you see within, you see movement within the fog bank as it's like, it's like a wave of fog that is like rolling towards like a, like a, like a wave on the ocean. Uh, and you see like outstretched hands and, and like humanoid bodies, like just sprinting in a dead sprint towards the, uh, the, 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 the after this rider. Well, that does not look good. Can I try closing the gates? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You can, you can start doing that on your second, on your next turn. Uh, as, yes, as the, as the two guys, uh, begin closing the gates, it's gonna take them three rounds to do it, but if you help, it'll only take, it'll be done, uh, at the beginning of round three. Liskal, you are continuing to help that guy. Uh, mm-hmm. you'll, on the next turn, you'll, you'll need a, another medicine check to continue to, to start bandaging him. Mm-hmm. Uh, precious, it is your Dude. turn. Since I can't see what's going, I'm... Yeah, I can get to up next to the gate mm-hmm. uh, to help with closing it, because my strength score isn't actually shabby for somebody of my stature. Totally. So... Hopefully I can actually lend a hand by, like, shouldering it uh, with one of the staple hands. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. So if the two of you want to just spend the rest of your turns this round uh, doing that, then the gate will be closed. Yes. Uh, sick. You slam the gate closed. One of the staple hands, like, brings the crossbar up and, and puts it in and goes, Oh my god. Oh my god. Did you see what was out there? Oh, uh, it looked like bunch of uh, people running in with the fog, but they don't look uh, particularly nice. As you as you say that, you I can still I can still see over the the gate because I'm tall. The gate is like ten feet tall. It's I don't it's, know. I'm seven foot four. That <laughs> means the gate is two and a half feet taller than you. <laughs> um, as you say that, you hear like just thuds as something slams into the gate at full force and you hear something crunch out there. Oof. Um, I like cringe. Yeah. Uh, Liskel, uh, this is your second uh, medicine check to now you've, you've cleaned these wounds as best you can. Now it is next time to I rolled a 26. You rolled a 26? Alright. You continue to to take care of him. He is, he is going to be uh, probably okay. At that, you hear some slams against the wall, uh, the gate, as something is attempting to break through it. Roll for these fine friends on the other side of the wall. I don't trust the way you said that, Zachary. I gotta admit it. Yeah, yeah. I don't like this. Don't you- <laughs> these are not friendly adjectives you're using. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. The door <laughs> but holds. Um, oh God. <laughs> the gate or the gate holds rather. Um, yeah. Uh, what's weird? You saw people, and you're hearing like movement. You are hearing no vocalization whatsoever. No like screaming or or shouting or or roaring or anything else. In response to the like banging and thumping, I'm gonna go. Uh, yes. Who is it? <laughs> can, can I help you? <laughs> Uh, Jesus. They do not answer. <laughs> uh, Precious, it is your turn. Solid. I'm trying to think because most of what I can do, most of what I can do really well doesn't particularly apply here. Mm-hmm. I guess. Uh, how sturdy does the gate look? Does it looks like with enough force, uh, whatever's on the other side of this is going to be able to break through, but it's going to take them a while. I think um, Precious is going to turn to the stable hands and be like, we probably don't want to be here if whatever is on the other side of this decides it wants to break through. I believe it's already decided. Uh, uh, all right. Um, w- where should we go? Inside. Okay. Uh, they, they both uh, run inside. 
meaning that there is no one else holding the gate shut, except for you two. Uh, we're we're a beefy bunny and <laughs> a beefy orc. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Just so much beef. So much beef. Uh, Mur, it's your turn. Hmm. Not a whole lot we can do right now, but I definitely like. We've got our weapons like strapped to us, right? Mm-hmm. You can you can draw if you want. Yeah, I definitely like have my like maul out at this point, mm-hmm. just in case. Probably a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sick. Uh, cool. So you you draw your maul as when you roll something else. Don't like that. Don't like that much <laughs> at. Oh. oh boy, I don't like that number. Uh, well, the seventeen or the twenty, the twenty. Well, I, I GM rolled a twenty-six. Um, don't like that. As you hear, at all the <laughs> slamming stops and the scrabbling starts. As you see, a trio of emaciated-looking humanoids uh, with st- weird cracked brittle clothing. They look like at one point they might have been villagers or something. Climbs over the wall uh, and drops drops down and looks at you uh, with absolute silence with black eye core dripping from their mouths. Yuck. Yuck indeed. Uh, They only have, (laughs) it took them a half action to do that so they're gonna now swarm around you with their last half action but they can't actually do anything yet. Let's go, it's your turn. Uh, is it time for my last medicine check? Uh, yeah. Alrighty. 27. Jesus, you are good at medicine. Uh, yeah, this guy, um, his breathing is shallow. His breathing kind of deepens out as you get a, ch- a feeling that he is not going to die in the next couple of minutes. Cool. I lean back over my shoulder, just like, can we get this gentleman inside, please? Uh, yeah, the, the, the young woman that was talking to you before, Elizabeth, uh, comes out with an axe. Uh, which she kind of bury, like just slams into the ground and then grabs him and begins to drag him back inside. Cool. Uh, is that my full turn or do I have a move action? Uh, you can have a, you have a half, a half action left. Um, how tall is the tavern? It, the t- actual tap, the tap room part of the tavern? Uh, you know, a 10 foot, one story, 10, foot two 10 foot ceiling, but one story, yeah. There's a, there, I mean, there, so there's, you'll see there's a, there's a, a main house, an upper set part. So there's, mm. it's a two story building. Mm-hmm. Um, the tap room itself is, you know, one story with an open ceiling. All right, I want to climb up to a vantage point with my movement. Fantastic! Give me an. Uh, what's the climb? Uh, is it athletics? Is that athletics? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have the climb skill. There's a climb skill. Well, I have this thing. I, oh no, I have a plus two bonus to climb checks. My apologies. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, cool. So yeah. So so then this is a this is a a total of a plus six because you have six ranks in athletics. Uh, you have a minus okay. two in strength, and yes. Okay. okay. Uh, plus two. Oh, wrong one. Yes. Uh, so you're, you're basically you yes. Of course. It's a and it's a complicated one. Uh, there's a lot of little wibblies on it. Uh, cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You um you get up to the the landing above the above the the patio at least you're not all the way up but you're you're up a bit uh, i want to make it clear that uh what this looks like is i like slap my hand against the wall and little suckers like stick mm-hmm. and i i'm <laughs> literally climbing up that way like a gecko like like a gecko lizard like a, friend. I, I am a lizard person cool so you are um, you're and 10 I foot have, in the air yeah Wicked on the side of a building. On the side of a building. Getting ready to go. Hell yeah. The door once more buckles behind you. Poof, poof. It's holding for now. Right as you hear that same scrabbling to your, like, off to the, between the main house and the servant quarters as a, another pair of these guys drop down uh, and begin to charge for the main house. Precious, that is your turn. I have this fine looking gentle person in front of me (laughs) so I'm going to designate (laughs) this person for my relentless attack which won't matter until potentially next turn but I'm just letting you know Mm -hmm. that dude that dude's mine oh yeah take him so yeah 
Hang on, I'm just double checking my darting weapon feat. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, feat. I believe I believe darting weapon is you can take a minus two to do more attacks with one of your to do two attacks with a uh, half yes. action. Yes, that is exactly what I would like to do. That's a whiff. It's a seven. That is a seven. That is not a hit, unfortunately. But you get to do it twice. Yeah. That's even more of a whiff. <laughs> That's a three. Oh, that is a three. So you you like. These guys just jump and like start swarming you as you like swing at them, uh, and unfortunately do not uh, make any purchase um, with your uh, attack. Good job. Yeah, but um, <laughs> also if that dude moves a five foot, I'm going to follow him as part of my fencing. Okay. Oh, you still have to. Yes. Oh, the free attack. Yes. Um, do you want to use your stance? Yeah. So each time an adjacent opponent attacks and misses, I may move five feet and draw the opponent into the square I was previously in. Or if the opponent moves away from me, I may immediately move to the square that he just left. So very cool. Yes. Awesome. So that was that was two actions. You still have one half action left. Uh, if you wanted to do a full attack, uh, just a normal attack, you could do that. You just wouldn't be able to do two of them. Yeah, I'd like to do a full attack. Sick. Oh. This is six. It doesn't matter. Even if I added a two, that would be an eight. Uh, yeah, it's it's a two for the whole round as well. For the whole uh, oh. the whole turn. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's still a six. So unfortunate. I'm yeah, these guys. Whiffing. These guys are weird. They're not moving like normal combatants should move. So, all right, Murr, this is your turn. I'm gonna take my big maul. Okay. And I'm gonna hit this one. All right. Into this one. Hell yeah. Uh, so I'm going to tell you uh, one thing. Uh, your maul yes. does subdual damage, which usually the undead are immune to. You can do lethal damage with your maul. You'll just do a little less damage. Okay. How do I do that? Uh, I will handle that for you. So, but you will, you'll take up, you'll take a penalty. Uh, I won't make it take a penalty. You'll just do half damage to them. Um, but since you do so much damage anyway, it should be fine. I could probably, mm-hmm. I'd probably be good. Boom. Okay, so I got an 18. You got an 18. So now I can roll damage? Now you can roll damage, and you're just going to halve it. So I do five damage. But what I, what I was intending to do, so because of one of my skills or something, I guess I'm going to use my stance. Turn the millstone? Yeah, that lets me move an enemy you know, a block over, and I'm going to use it to push this one into this one in an attempt to disable them both. Um, So the the, the final square has to be adjacent to you. Oh, it has to be adjacent to me, not adjacent to the thing. Yes. Oof. Okay, fine. Never mind. I guess I'm just going to hit it. (laughs) You can still move it if you want to. (laughs) Yeah, so so five damage. Now it's going to make a damage save against 12, and if it fails, it dies. You just smash that thing. (laughs) <laughs> um, yes, nice. normal enemies in this game, uh, they don't have a health bars. They just, the more damage they take, the more chance that you just pop them. Uh, cool. It explodes. It explodes. Into a, a, into a fucking mist of ichor. Mm-hmm. It's gross. Uh, it's gross. It's gross. Um, cool. You have one, you have a half action left. Oh god, what can I do with a half action? Uh, you could reposition. Okay, I'm gonna move myself so I can attack this one next. Sick. Awesome. Uh, next is the Green Raveners. So they are going to attack each of you. They are going to do Murr. It's a 9 and a 19. The 19 will hit as it bites down on you, Murr. Ow. But it does not overcome. So it just chomps down on your chainmail and you feel like the pressure of its teeth. Um, but it does not make any purchase. You don't take any damage. Can I like shake it off? Uh, sure. It like yeah, yeah. it like tries to like it swings at you with its fist. You like block it. It bites your 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 uh, shoulder, but it does not make any purchase. You just shug it off. Oh, this that's and that's going to be a hit on the slam attack against you, um, Precious. I would like to invoke Harry. Okay. Uh, so I may make a reflex save with the DC equal to the attack check, mm-hmm. and if I succeed. The damage drops to zero. Hell yeah. So you can parry, make a reflex save with the DC of 21. Okay. Your reflex is pretty high. So this and that. Yes. Big money, no whammies. Big money, Aww. no whammies. Hey, so if close. you want, you can spend one of your action dice to boost that. Uh, and you will automatically succeed because you only need a plus one. Uh, yes. Where's... <laughs> 
Where do I use my action dice? Uh, so your action die is right now a d4. Just... That's uh, on your character sheet. It is just under your saving throws. You start with three. You've got three left. You can spend one. Um, though I, for, for cool character decisions, I think I'm going to give you each, award you each an additional one. So you can just spend that one now and still have three. Uh, and you just roll a, D th- a d4 and add it to your okay. roll. Uh, and because yeah, you it, are fortune favors the bold, you add uh, you roll a d4 plus two. Um, ultimately, it doesn't matter because I only need one to succeed. Yes. So yeah. I'm not going to bother rolling my dice for sure. Um, yeah. So you, uh, I don't. I'm not going to roll damage on that on that attack uh, as he swings his big fist and you just like wah pit, slap it on the side to the side with your uh, your rapier. Extremely cool. Uh, Liskel, that's you. I'd like to use the last of my movement, or the, the my move, a half action to get up to that landing, mm-hmm. and then I will take a shot with my bow, cool. if I may. I don't think I have the action economy to get into my stance. Well, so you got to the landing on your last turn. Oh, wicked! Then, um, as long as I've got somewhere that I can take my put, assume my stance. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You're standing you're standing on like the, the patio uh like roof. Alrighty, then I currently get a I assume my dead shot stance then. And I will take uh, a, a shot. Hell yeah. Seventeen. Seventeen will hit. Who are you shooting at? Uh the one that just tried to slam precious. Okay. Uh that'd be this guy. Uh No Seventeen hits? Uh, Should down. I not have gone for that one? <laughs> all you of my stuff kill is, Sealer. <laughs> all of my stuff is built around like pressing the advantage on a single opponent. So like I actually get a plus two to attack him next round. I, I, I will remind you, let's call that there are two more that are heading for the tavern. Oh my point! I had I had forgotten. I will aim for one of those terms. Mm. Yeah, I'll aim for blue one. Cool. Uh, as as labeled on this map. Oh, they're labeled. Oh, I was too zoomed out to see that. Yes. Alrighty. Oh, fuck yeah, um, there they are. Okay. That's just for ease of reference. I don't know if I can add the plus two. Right, my damage roll will have a plus two because I don't see a way to add. I, that I just to typed it. in a plus two uh, in the actual damage field. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Look at that! Look how easy that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so three damage to this guy. Uh, he's gonna make a he's gonna get, make a death save against eleven. Still fails. You an arrow <laughs> a bra- arrow strikes it uh, right through the eye and it just goes. It, like the mom- it's still going forward, but its head goes back and so it does like a backflip before it hits the ground. <laughs> nice. I, ca- I like the visual of where I am higher as well. It's sort of literally just like a direct line, like some trigonometry basics right here. Just like, mm-hmm. just like head snaps back and hits the deck. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, the Raveners on the other side of the gate are going to keep slamming into the gate. They, the gate continues to hold. Next. Good gate. Good gate. Solid gate. Uh, yeah. Good work, gate. <laughs> uh, yeah, this guy is going to charge in here. Uh, he runs underneath you, uh, Liskel, and is now inside. You hear people screaming. Oh, Did nobody God. fucking close the door? It's like <laughs> saloon doors. It's a tavern. Precious, that is your turn. Okay, I'm going to press my attack on on green two, mm-hmm. this guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, since I missed last turn and I'm attacking the same dude, I get a plus two to my roll. Hell yeah. So if I use darting weapon, that means I'm back down to my base. Hell yeah. So let's try this again. Okay. Boom. So Boom. I'm in a threat, right? You're in you're within your threat. You can choose to spend an action die to activate the threat and make it a critical hit. Eh. I, Which you don't really I'll you don't really need to do because this guy is a standard character and you'll probably just Yeah. He doesn't have any wounds for you to 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 chunk at. Yeah. So I'll just roll damage. Hell yeah. Eight damage. All right. He's going to make a, a death save against a 14. Manages to... Survives your first attack. You stab. You withdraw. It's still standing. Yep. So I'm going to use my second attack. Your second darting attack. Also hits. Fuck him up. And a damage of 11. Jesus. 
He's now taken a total of 19 damage. Um, oh. So that halved is... Uh, so he has to roll... He gets a plus three. He has to roll an, uh, a, a 17, a 16 or greater on the die. Uh, he does not. He goes down. You you slay this zombie monster. Hell yeah. Sick. You have one and a half action left. I'm going to head back towards the end because Murr's totally got the dude who's uh, the dude he's fighting, dealing with. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. I'm heading towards the inn. Sick. Uh, Alright, Mer, it is your turn. I'm gonna whack this second one. The one that tried to hit me. Because it's a bitch. Sure. <laughs> uh, make an attack roll. 23 will do it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you hit. Um, yeah, I got a 23. Uh, okay. And your damage. Still standing with that first hit. Can I hit it again? You have another half action. You can spend it as an attack. I do have a different weapon. Does it does it take a half action to draw a second weapon? Yes. Okay, then I'll just keep keep hitting with this one. Mm-hmm. So I've got my um, my blacksmithing hammer, which for some reason does uh, lethal does damage. other type of damage. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, I'll just use this one though. All right, that's another hit. You just wham, wham. These things are pretty. Fifteen. <laughs> so, uh, so seven. <laughs> another seven damage. Uh, it still it is still standing. This thing is Dang. is what the fuck? <laughs> it rolled it. Listen, the DC for that death save was 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 fifteen. It rolled a sixteen. Uh, it is still fuck. standing. This thing you were just wailing on this thing, and it is like looks up at you and goes. Well, I am gonna use my feet to move it like here. Cool. Put it put it between you and the. Put you between it and the rest of the of the thing, uh, as it is. It, yeah. it becomes its turn. It's going to it's going to do two attacks on you. One misses. The bite hits. And uh, am I going to turn into a zombie? Who knows? Your <laughs> your damage reduction is three because this is not a blunt thing. So you take one point of damage to your vitality as it as oh, it no. pierces as it pierces you a little bit. Current forty seven. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let us your turn. <laughs> um, just to clarify, can I, uh, just because I couldn't quite picture the vibe of if the tap room is open air or if there's a window or something, can I get a shot on the creature currently in, in the tap room uh, from my current position? You cannot. There's a wall between you and it. Okay, that was what I wasn't sure about. Mm. No problem. I can see Precious is coming in, but I don't want to risk that. What I'm going to do, how high up am I? Ten feet, you You're said. ten feet, yeah. Uh, can I drop down? Uh, yeah, you can, you can, so two things. One, in the dead shot, you can leave the dead shot stance and drop down without any trouble. Um, Mm -hmm. because while in the dread dead shot stance, you can't move usually. Yeah. So you would have to leave the stance. You just wouldn't get the pen, the the bonus that you were getting before. Uh, but you could do, you could do that and then just drop gracefully, uh, to not take any fall damage. Yeah. I will take a half action to, uh, drop. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, basically sort of like like a very small scale version of Miles Morales' Leap of Faith mm. you know sure. sticky hand like I, I drop down mm. uh, still holding the bow in place and the second I sort of graciously hit the ground I uh, loose uh, an arrow at the one that is there sick uh, make an attack roll let me take that plus two off there I still yeah the plus one's already a combo. you still got a pretty oh, solid bonus is- yeah, look, that's why I'm using the bow and not the other stuff I can do, Zach, because once again, Jade was like, who needs strength in a character? <laughs> it turns out, actually, you do. <laughs> uh, oh, Jade. Look, somebody with the amount of hit points Precious has cannot judge me right now, quite frankly. <laughs> that's the other mistake I make with my characters. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, I'm sitting. I'm sitting here with 48 hit points, or rather, 48 sitting pretty. vitality, <laughs> vitality, mm. and 19. Uh, else. I, I rolled a 20, so a 25. You rolled a 25. Hell yeah, roll damage. All right, let me actually double check some, because I think I think if you wanted to, you could spend a a, a, a thing to. 
make it a crit? Yeah, I think a crit does. It does. It still does something to a to a normal character. Um, oh, you spend one action. You can spend one action die to just kill it immediately. Oh, sweet! I'll do that. Yeah, because uh, yeah, crit uh, means they automatically fail a damage save, and these guys only have one damage save. Yeah, and you said we had we gained an extra action die already. Yeah, for being yeah. For being fun sweet. and having good ideas. Wicked. Then yeah, I will. I literally drop down, and it's like through the back of the the neck where this creature's wandering in like it snaps Mm -hmm. and its head topples off yeah you see it it like falls to the ground and and elizabeth was like holding an axe ready to fight it um just okay sure yeah the arrow sort of like is now embedded in the wall on the other side of the tap room she's like i'll get that back later and i sort of turn back round Mm -hmm. um to to look out because that gate is still the gate is still oh. buckling, and finally, it breaks. And no! as two more raveners uh, bust their way in. <sighs> um, yeah, that was one of their actions. One of them moves up uh, to to attack Excuse me. Uh, Mur, and then one of them just is charges. Um, next would be the uh, blue raveners. They are all dead. Next is precious. All right, so you got a new friend. Red number two, my new friend, my fine, upstanding new friend, uh, is the subject of my relentless attack. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do darting weapon this time. I think I'm just gonna try to stab, mm-hmm. do the stabby thing. Um. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. Uh, like I said today, if you wanted, you could spend an action die to just kill him straight out, or you could just roll the damage and see if you can do it with the damage d- save. Um, I'm just gonna roll damage and see if I can do it with the damage sa- save. I feel like I'm gonna need my dice for something cool in a little bit, so... Totally. Uh, ten. That's a, that's a solid one. Uh, he's gonna roll against fifteen. You just... This thing is like running past you, and you do like a cool twirl and just impale it on the way, and it just keeps moving forward and collapses. Nice. Uh, and you have one uh, half action left. Let me. I'm gonna come up here and help my good friend Murr. Well, prepare to. I can't do anything else this round, but. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, can you? Are you able to? If you moved uh, to flank it, Murr would get a bonus. Like, yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, when you're flanking, it, uh, you get a plus two to attack rolls on people you flank. Sick. Uh, Mer Smith, it is your turn. Now I'm gonna hit one of these into the other, or rather, I guess I'm gonna hit this one into this one. Totally. Uh, Does that do damage to both of them? Uh, I'll make him. I'll make him roll fortitudes to 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 you know maybe get a bit of the damage. Oh, yeah. All right, let's roll an attack roll. It's a twenty six. That'll hit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> roll uh, roll damage. Oof. So that's three damage to that guy, um, and you uh, you move him. He slams into this guy, moves back. Uh, but, 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 you, so you like you like catch him with the half the shaft of your hammer and just whip him around and slam him into the next guy. Um, it's not as much it's not as hard as you would have liked. Uh, I'll roll fort for them uh, and they'll take um, they'll each take a one point of damage uh, from from this. Yeah, because neither of them got beat your your thing. So this guy takes. <laughs> Uh, is one damage. This guy takes one damage. They do still have to make the saves again, so this could kill them anyway. That'd be nice. Uh, that's a failure for the green guy, and the, the success for the red guy. So you you just pile him onto the other guy, and and just <laughs> he just, just you kill the other guy with this guy's body by slamming it into him, and then this guy is still uh, standing. You have one action left. We have a half action left. I'm gonna I'm gonna do another hit. 19. That's a hit. 10 points of damage. Well, 5 points of damage, because it's split in half. Because it's split in half. So you make a save against uh, against 5. Against 15, rather. Boom! That guy goes down. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah! Nicely done. And that is the last of Mur. You are standing 
over these pile of strange undead. I'm gonna poke at one of them with like the like long end of my hammer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Don't get sick, Mer. And I'm gonna go collect my arrow from the remnants of the skull of the one that I had shotted. Um, <laughs> well, I'm attempting to not get sick by po- poking uh, at it with the hammer rather than my hand. Yeah, I want to retrieve my arrow and like examine this body. Uh, cool. See what I can make of it. Yeah, they are weird. Uh, they are so they are they wear the tattered remains of clothing, but the clothes are scorched and brittle. Their faces and and teeth are like messed up, like like they've been doing bite attacks, but like their bodies are not built for bite attacks, so it's been like damaging their face to do it. But that just makes them more dangerous. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like that. Yeah. That is that is what you can you can guess. See so yeah, how this guy, um, the the writer is is unconscious. It will pro- will probably be so for a while, but he is alive. Um, the horse that he rode in on, uh, you see now has a comfortable saddle, a crossbow, a loading arm on like built into the saddle, so like somebody could load a crossbow one handed by just like. Mm-hmm. Putting like putting it in the loading Sick. arm, clicking it forward, and then fire. It's the kind of stuff um, that like mounted cavalry would have, or or, or, or uh, mounted archers mm-hmm. would have. So the party from the fraternity ran into problems. Then I say, sort of coming over, like so, like flicking the echo off my arrow before putting it back in my quiver. <laughs> Wonder if that uh makes it poisonous you know your arrows make it more dangerous they are they are oh were they already poisoned i should have assumed sorry well they have the option to poison it, it. it's what it says on my character sheet i don't know so so the, the, it says ap2 poisonous on my body yes poison the, the poisonous trait means you can put poison on them uh, well, that makes more sense <laughs> they've got like a reservoir just for like poison. i was just like cool poison bow mm-hmm. um but yeah yeah um, as uh, as Elizabeth comes out and says, um, he he has a, a a journal. He handed it to me before he passed out again. Maybe this has some answers. He he said as much that uh, they need help at the church. That would probably be the church in Andra. Um, it's 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 just it's just down the road, a few miles between here and and the village itself. Uh, wonderful. But thank you. I will take this. Let's go. You open the journal that uh, Elizabeth hands you. Only the first couple pages of the journal are filled. The entries aren't dated, and the handwriting is inexpert. The journal itself seems fairly new. Would you like to read it? Would you like me to? I'll read it. Cool. Beryl told me I'd do well to keep a record of my travels, so I bought this book to write them in. We're off to a village called Andra in Sullen Pass. Those boreal pyre folks contacted Beryl through Sister Falthine and set us up with a nice little tomb robbing job. Of course, it's the order, so they'll call it reclamation or something. A wizard named Pashel died out there and he supposedly took some holy relics to the grave. Now the order wants them back. We leave in the morning. Tonight we're staying at a nice inn called the Tipsy Wyvern. Nice folks might stop in for a bit on the way back. Snap the journal shut, just like, necromancers. Uh, yeah, so, so what are you all doing? Uh, Precious and Murray, you're standing by all the enemies, uh, the dead enemies at the gate. I'm gonna... So the doors are open again now, right? The doors have been busted open. Cool. I'm get, uh, is any part of them, like, broken? Or just, like, the bar that was holding them the, got, like... The bar, the bar got, like, splintered open. The part. Cool. Um, I guess I'm gonna start dragging corpses out of the gates sure just to like pile them up over like Mm here-ish how do we make sure they don't you know do their shambling thing again should we burn these I believe that that would be wise yes Uh, at this point the the fog that followed them in while there are no there don't seem to be any more of these monsters the fog is present and it is like rolled into the whole uh coach in like like 
area. Is it a natural fog? No. Can I like? I was gonna say yeah. Like it see, it didn't seem as such as it blew in, but like also because the visual's good. Like just gonna do the chameleon tongue thing, but out into the air to see what the fog tastes like. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it tastes like normal fog, but it certainly isn't behaving normally. Hmm. Can I go outside and kind of like look for an indication of like what route these? undead took to get here uh yeah you can make a survival uh, check to how to try to like track um their route oh right that's not a thing that i am skilled in i can still roll it though right yeah you'll just be at a minus four because you're untrained okay we're i can't make it figure out how to make it on my character sheet so i'm just gonna roll 1d20 minus three which is a 14. That's not too bad. No. Um, yeah, they definitely came from the east, which is where Andra is and where and where the where the where the writer was writing from. They looked like they were following the, the tracks of um, of uh, this guy's horse. This guy's name is Herdiger. Uh, he's a he's a soldier. I, would... I also dragged the dead horse out, put it on the pile of dead things. Sure. Um, I would like to check over. Uh, the packs and anything on the horse, and then over um, Herdinger, did you say? Herdinger. Um, and check to see if there are any items or anything that was what caused these creatures to come after him, or whether it was just because of where he was. Yeah, it looks like he, he I mean, he's got like, you know, he's got a crossbow, he's got his ammunition, um, and, you know, some other stuff, but he does not, nothing that, that, jumps out at you as something that like okay. like a like a but no relics or no, anything no. like that how is everybody feeling i'm i'm doing well enough thank you i'm like to ellie like pulling the tack off of the dead horse so that it could be saved <laughs> no mm -hmm. no sense in in burning something valuable when you know setting setting a blaze to the fucking corpses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh precious like kind of like Pulls himself up to his full height, adjusts his armor, and like twitches his nose and says, I'm affronted. This is an affront. This cannot stand. I like raise an eyebrow. What cannot stand? Well, he asked us to go to the church. They came from the church. Maybe the douchebag who raised these dead is at the church and we can give him a piece of our minds or her or them. Whoever. Well, he asked for help for the others. It was like, uh, I don't know how much attention you are paying during your uh, match with the uh, swatch salesman. But um, he was part of a larger group. And he's asked us to help them. So I'm, I'm not following what exactly the affront is. Just undead generally? They tried to eat us. That's not polite society. They're undead, precious. <laughs> I don't, I'm I don't just saying, I'm have... offended. It's no well, excuse. Duly noted. I'm gonna, like, ruffle the fur between Precious's ears. Eight. Mm. <laughs> Precious, like, is probably used to Murr trying to do this by now, but he still just, like, kind of, like, tries to swat Murr's hand away. You are unsuccessful in trying this. Yeah. Well, let us... Do we... I do not think waiting for morning is necessarily the best way to go. Yeah, I don't. I don't reckon that the folks in that uh, church probably have enough time for that. I'm gonna call over. Uh, what's her name, Lisbeth? Mm -hmm. And uh, say thank you for your hospitality. Uh, you may want to uh, create a pyre around those over there uh, sooner rather than later. Mm. Point at the pile of corpses. Um, I've stacked them as, w as best as I can, uh, so it should be fairly easy for you to create a pyre around them, but I just figured I'd let you know where all of the undead corpses have been relocated. Uh, okay, yeah, so so you're going to go help them, right? Uh, yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. Otherwise, I would take the time to create this pyre myself. Oh, of course. Um, it's here from Andrew. It's about two miles, uh... Uh, not two miles, two, two hours uh, east of here. Um, you'll you'll want to get going uh, before you lose, you know, uh, too much moonlight. Thank you. Go back inside, get my cloak. <laughs> Just, uh, okay. Yep. 
I go I- get my game, apologize to Chester. Um, I give him half the coin back <gasps> that I took from him. <laughs> <laughs> Only half, though. Um, Only half. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Go off, hero. <laughs> We'll we'll be back and we can settle up once we're back, but <laughs> if you're still here. Well, I'm certainly not leaving until it's bright out. I guess I'll go back inside and grab my pack. Mm-hmm. If I, if I don't already have that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, as you grab the pack and head uh head out from the tavern.